All right, let's watch this here. I thought this was really cool on many levels. I like the finger interaction. I like the idea, like the effects of this here. And I like the end that we have something that comes towards camera and it's the first person, it's actually character here that does that. I like that idea a lot, but if you go one by one, I thought this is really neat because this is hard to do. This is a, a big pain where you have to really go frame by frame and adjust to make sure distance works. But it's cool to like the offset there and the asymmetry there. It's neat. I like that as at the beginning. You know, it draws me in already just because of the complexity. I think if I be picky, I would probably change some of the uh, finger poses. I like this. There's a enough of a difference there in that pose. This gets a bit too evenly spaced out. And I would probably either bring that thumb lower so you have uh, space between the thumb and then the pinky or kind of readjust <clears throat> the pose there. Or potentially, as we scroll forward here, you can see how it kind of rests there with a slight change. So it could be something where it had a little bit of a, a finger wiggle potentially, just something a bit, a bit different there in that pose. But I like that there's a change. Here's a change A in position, right? up and down, but also then a slight change in the fingers. But again, it could potentially be pushed. But here I like the separation there for sure. Love all this. Love the look of that and how it expands and how it changes. I like how it's it's potentially simply made just like this model here, but it tells the story. I like the drag there in the fingers as well with a nice snappy grab. And I love that. I'll end at the end. I think in terms of presentation, when you do the run into that, I mean, it goes away and then loops back into nothing for that. So, I mean, it works as a loop if that was the intention. If I would do this, I would probably do that a bit higher. And by that, I mean that the, the bite here and the hand, that it would be more center frame and potentially leave it and not go back into nothing because it's, it's it's a fun idea, but it's kind of almost undersold where it's kind of close to the edge there. So I would probably just go a bit higher if if it's OK to leave it there front and center as the end of the story. But if it's supposed to be somewhat played as a loop, I mean, he'll be eating over and over and over. But it's cute how it does go away and starts over. So that would just be the uh, my change of critique there, you know, depending on this needs to if this needs to loop or not. Now, if this were the challenge, there's a time restriction, but afterwards you can always bring that into frame here and then bring it back. So hold it longer a little bit and then go back out of frame to go into nothing afterwards. You know, once the challenge is done, you can always make tweaks on it and make it a bit longer if needed. But other than that, that's that. It's very, very cool. Let's watch this one. I thought this was really, that, I mean, not that I have experienced a broken finger like this. I do have uh, the middle finger, my right hand broken because of a basketball injury. But what I like about this is that it's not a lot of first person um, shots they have. They have weapons. So there was somewhat of a, a repetition in terms of the content. I love that in this case, it's actually just about the hand. And it's about an injury. And I love that. I think potentially to not be somewhat in the same color value there. Maybe I would potentially just bring it up bigger and maybe white or something just poppier since it's so dark and really go for maximum color contrast and maybe give this a bigger, uh, you know, a bigger thing or maybe even some more or something in there. Just kind of push that. And potentially, I don't mind that it's tracking with the hands the other reason why i think up here would be potentially better is because you're getting a bit close there almost from a tangent there but i wonder if i would loosen up i'm not saying that it should be snap here and stay put and be locked as the rest happens so a little bit of tracking and following is kind of neat but maybe just a bit less so it doesn't go down so far or as much i think that'd be the the biggest thing I would say just about that. And I know this is, as always, with the challenges, there's a time constraint, but it could be interesting too to, if, if you would go back in there and kind of readjust things a tiny bit, potentially bringing in the hand in a different pose, you would have to find an angle where the finger doesn't look broken, where you see the hand, because right off the bat, it's revealed something's wrong. But it could also be fun where the hand seems okay, 
and then it rotates into this pose and you go, oh, this is really not okay. And then do that. For fingers though, I would be careful to not um, move all these fingers at the same time. A little bit of slight offset, probably especially in this one where they seem okay. And maybe you want to delay this one a bit more because this one is just, you know, it's pain and it's healing. And maybe at that point it would be just a bit further out and then you can bring it in. It's like, all right, that seems pretty good. And that same thing, maybe fanning out, maybe a little finger wiggle. Because one thing I'm looking at is like, this is a, it's like a, a finger, like a finger out, like all fingers are out and then into a bent, all finger fist pose versus, well, this is the one that's injured. So it could be something where it's mostly one finger, it's kind of like the, just the index curls in and out to kind of check if that one's okay. It's almost like you want to go from this to this and then bend only that finger again, it's kind of like as a, as a check. So same thing here, offsetting fingers. Other than that, it's a really cool idea. And the only other thing in terms of detail, and it's a bit of a pain, but there could be something where as you wrap those fingers around the index finger there to have a, a bit more of a feeling of that they're connecting. So as this is now connecting, that this finger starts to move, this section starts to move a bit. So it doesn't feel so disconnected. You can feel the grip, and the tightness. Because here's a bit of a cheat, how it goes in there. And that's kind of that. It's very neat. Love the idea. Again, love the idea of seeing the fingers and having that be the focus uh, of the shot. This one's neat too. Looking at that one, I picked this one just because there are a couple of things I want to mention. Hey, I like, I mean, I like the idea. I, mean, I like with this rig and the technical aspect of the gun and all the details that you can put in. Why I'm picking this one here is that when you have this shooting, A, I would make this potentially a bit bigger. Maybe it's like glow, not that you want to render this, but maybe, you know, whatever effects that don't need the renders adding in there. So we can clearly see what is going on. Because as you sh as you start this, we can kind of see it, but it also goes away fairly quickly. It would be neat to have the projectile be a bit bigger so we can really follow what's going on. And then the reaction of this character just feels a bit non-existent if you just look at the character and ignore all of this it just feels like it's just the path and it doesn't even feel like with that direction change that there's a slight change or a lean it feels a bit on the path with the same cycle somewhat up until around here ish so to me it feels like a bit of a clear view of what is you know shooting out there then a bigger reaction to hey i'm actually being shot at i took maybe change direction maybe go lower duck a little bit or something that would be something then into this so watch out it feels a bit it's tricky because we're over we're overlapping this shooting with what's going on here and also it feels like it's going to go out this way but then it kind of goes then away from us watch out for the path of this here but mainly is that we're almost missing the extension because on a jump, you always want a full extension of the leg for a couple of frames, one or two at least, right? But then we're straight back into a bend. So we're kind of missing the stretchy power. And we're kind of going quickly. I know there's a little bit of offset, but it has a slight twin feel. And I know there's, you know, there are visual offsets there. But just as a whole, I feel like there's a little bit too much mirroring there. And the other thing is, once we get to here, it just feels like that is a very clear look of, ha, I... It got you there. Now, as the character, the first person your character drops, it would be neat to get more darts on that character following, tracking how this character falls over. Just something about him kind of spaced out, looking, losing focus there. The rest is okay. It just felt like that. It's a weird disconnect. I would have loved for him to kind of have that evil stare, that victory stare, but follow. And if that means I need to close the eyes a bit later, I, mean, I think that would be totally fine. And that is that. Always a fan of Zelda. You got sound here too. All right, I'm going to turn this off quickly, the sound. But I like this. I like the looking. You're not quite sure what's happening. And then you have that slightly coming in here, realigning for the focus. And I was a big fan of those side dashes with 
interesting mechanics and offset poses really pushed body poses and using the set too so you can go from that hopping onto that then onto this with a clear silhouette the only thing i would say is potentially changing the colors of the background as this starts to blend in a little bit starting to kind of i mean you can still see what is going on but you could potentially make it a bit clearer see how like this it's fairly clear for this as it comes in i know this is really fast but i still i feel like i'm registering this pose and there's a slight worry in that face i think maybe a, i don't know if that's possible a bit more of a snarl potentially or even wider eyes maybe not blocking the lower part of the pupil you're fairly up there in the uh and covering of that size if you have you know almost a full white around the eye and potentially either an angrier eyebrow that's my awesome drawing skill um just something or push pose because again when there's such fast movement you're not going to register much but if i'm watching this over and over i'm just seeing that frame so i wouldn't really really push that and again because it's so fast it's it's not really a problem but watch out for the broken wrist for that one frame it could still be somewhat cheated and modeled with the wrist and then a finger adjustment so that it doesn't have that broken feel and potentially taking this and cheat it where it maybe seems somewhat hidden behind the body so it doesn't feel like you hold on this is the foot and then this is that just making sure that everything is really clear even potentially not overlapping here although it's not too crazy because we have it very clear here And then probably what I would do is once you're up here and you hold, 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 because like everything goes down. I'm probably one frame earlier. Do the legs first while the rest stays put. So it almost like the legs are now initiating that drop into this. And it's tricky with the eye. She disappears, but I potentially have even that eye here, the head here, just because we are somewhat here and adjusting or uh, indicating a path this way and then suddenly the body switches over there just because it's over one frame i think you might be okay with that here and even potentially deforming that sword into a uh, a curve maybe but having that eye that face here and then into that so that's my two cents but it's very cool and i like the detail too of that adjustment jump with a slight slide right an adjustment and then this leg coming out it's a lot of cool mechanics i think the rhythm is cool too landing hold quick quick hold hold and i like that too that it breaks frame are we going oh where where the character go and then we catch up and like, oh boy it's over bam, bam into that so lots of really cool stuff in the shot i thought this was really clever to add a mirror because when you have a first person view there's not much you can do in terms of well I can't really see my face. So I thought this was really neat. I would, I would just do and push this further is because if you don't know that it's a first person thing, it's kind of like, wait, 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 what's moving? What are we looking at? Oh, wait, this is a mirror because this is really edging frame here. So you could potentially just have that door maybe cut off, but it, you know, it's not super comfortable. So you kind of push the uncomfortable aspect of that so it's not here so you know you don't want to make it too comfortable but because of that you would have the character a bit more off center to the right and because of that it will give you room to bring up that hand here right with the lipstick and then the actual hands here bigger just because you will make that connection a bit more with this right there overlapping but you want to give it enough room so you understand oh okay this goes down this arm goes down oh okay it's a mirror so, so that you make that connection right off the bat because it's really really edging frame there and it's cool too especially here now as we as she then turns just watch out it feels like that is a bigger turn than what we're seeing here either through eyes or a head turn so i would make sure that this matches really as we're starting to move that there's more movement in the head you need to exaggerate a little bit and I see that the eyes are starting there, but I think you can push that a bit more. And then we're back into this, and I like the 
Again, it's going back to a really first person view. I mean, I know it is before too, but I just like that switch, that contrast of seeing the body and then going over there. And that's that. It's very clever. I really like this. Let's watch this here. I kind of picked this one too because of a couple of things. Well, hey, I like basketball. It's kind of neat to see that type of thing done in the first person. But the reason why I'm picking two, and it's almost like taking the idea, but I would just push that further. And this might not be the shot for it to do to do it, but I like this. So you have your first person view. That means you can't see the body, but you could add some interesting stuff where because we see the shadow, you can almost tell another story. So I know this is completely off topic of what this shot is, but it just gives me a thought of imagine you would have a shadow, but it would be longer. And the character might be doing something, a nice clean silhouette, so you can play with this. So we might see some arms here doing something, and that's reflected in the shadow here. I don't know, a cigarette or a, reading a book or having a cell phone or so, whatever you want to do, do here. And then the gag would be that there's another shadow coming, and that could be a burglar, someone surprising another person or something. But it would be the fun thing of we're watching the shadow play out a potential situation that the character is completely unaware of because we're, you know, we, and you can play this with the animation where it's totally fine. So whatever action a character is doing with the hand is kind of potentially playful or more, you know, peaceful while and that's the shadow, while another shadow comes in and we're anticipating something that's a bit more violent in nature or surprise or something that, you know, that this character is not aware of. I think that, I know I'm, I'm completely going off topic with what this shot is, but I like that shadow here and just gave me a thought of, ah, this could be really neat where we could push the idea and do kind of a shadow play storytelling um, with, you know, within that first person frame. All right, and that's kind of it. Another Zelda clip here, the sound. Cool too, because I like that. The ringing in the ears after all this, when I bring that sound down. So I do like the sound of that in it. And it's, I just like the, the animation is nice with that clean stance. You could potentially bring out the arms and the sword out. So there's a more separation. You don't want to overlap darker glovey hands here with the legs. But then I like this. This is a nice change with that arc and a clear move out there but again because we are going further away this is just a tricky thing as we are with that perspective something where we might see maybe maybe even if it's kind of like a it makes no sense like a, like a smoke trail or something but so we can see a bit further and kind of see what is happening there but what i like too is that we have then a cool effect and i like that this character is anticipating like oh boy and especially this, that we have the effect impacting your first person view. So now you can have some interesting camera work with what just happened. And also some storytelling by just seeing the arm on the floor, change of camera there, and then coming up into that reveal and then ending there. It's cool. I think just as a mechanic there, and as, a, as an action piece, I think there are a lot of cool elements where you have shooting and dodging, just the mechanics of that effects thing, more camera work and bigger mechanics here. I think overall that's very very cool especially ending too with with that the conflict of this and the camera you know with the angles all that so i think is very well done here also i'm just again a big zelda fan so any of that just immediately catches my attention but yeah very very cool again that you know, clever usage of sound design and go back and play this again with sound it's very cool this is very cute Got a dog, I know exactly how that feels. I think I will probably play with the playfulness, speaking of which, where maybe that path would be a bit more curved, maybe a little hop, hop, run. It's a bit more contrast in the action of what that dog is doing. But the thing that I liked is that at the end, it's like, oh, what happened here? And that the character is so small in frame. So what I would do personally is, if possible, I don't know if you have to jump into frame a bit more, but something where I imagine the dog is bigger in frame. It could almost be that, you know, the dog is really close with the paws on the body. It's my dog does that a lot where it kind of gets on his back feet and the front legs are on, on my chest. And the reason I'm saying this is that you would have bigger contrast of big to small, really in for, uh, reinforcing the, the loneliness and the sadness just through the size in frame. So that's the only thing I would do here where 
potentially bringing this closer and it would be also be really cute and you can see a bit more first person interaction with the legs and maybe the cameras down and see part of the chest and then jumping off and again like i said a bit of a more complex path and actions on the dog because it feels like it's also moving almost a bit slow looking at the leg moves but then everything feels just a bit smooth and very straight path wise but it's like the end a lot it's just the the small character in frame like oh it just reinforces that sadness uh and that's why i mentioned that the bigger framing just to kind of push that contrast a bit more it's very cute though baby time super cute i like this just because usually again with first person shooters you have or first person view you have the shooting aspect and guns and everything i thought this was a cute change and you know i have kids and i know exactly this i can I can see myself in this and it's just a, a cute angle and you just could play a lot with scale differences with a bigger finger, smaller finger, just interactions of that. I mean, that's a, it's a tiny, tiny hands, but, <laughs> but that was really, really cute. And it could potentially be even pushed further where it could be, again, this is deviating from what the shot is, but taking the idea and potentially grabbing the baby and the baby is super happy, smile and everything. And then moving over. So imagine you move the baby over from wherever it's being held in the air to a table or its little bath station where the baby's put into water and then the water is not exactly what the baby expected. So you have a bit of a contrast of, you know, happy face moves over, then the head is here and being put into the into a bathtub and then going into, ah, really cold. Just kind of pushing the idea a bit further and pushing... The facial features but as an idea i love this i love that you have the action with the little baby and seeing just that perspective and not the usual first person gun or, or action sequence it's very cute yeah the only thing i would be just i would say just kind of pushing that idea further and going for a bit for more contrast in terms of what is going on and what you do with the baby and, and just the action because it would be also fun if you hold the baby Imagine your character's walking, you could see the feet and it would be a change in scenery as you know, the camera moves forward. I think all that could add to some energy and then, like I said, at the end, putting that, putting it down to the bathtub or you know, whatever people use at that point. They're so small, you have a little bucket there with water. So yeah, I thought it was very cute, very cute idea. I like that, I like that. It's good framing there. You got the hand over the face, you can see one eye. I think that was really cool. And I like this too because it's there's something about zombies being slow, right? And it's something where and it's not exactly what's happening here, but I like the idea of a slow moving zombie where you can almost kind of push the idea further where you you have arms out and then it becomes more about I know this is totally different than what the shot is, but I see this and it gives me an idea of what if the character would be playing with the zombie where you can have fast movements of the human contrasted with slow movements of the zombie. And I know this is not at all what this shot is, but I like the shot and I like the idea and I like that little that end. I think that's really funny. And this could also be something with a title or something. There are many things that you can you know put on top of that. But if anybody's watching is going, oh yeah, it was zombies, first person view. I think it's something that you could play around with. And it could be all kinds of things where, again, for me, it's just the contrast and taking advantage of the speed difference of a slow zombie and a fast human. This could be human running away. I mean, she could be running away and in, into a building, closing the door. And then you just have that face and that, the hand of the zombie against the window or, you know, or something, an interaction where character holds something to push the zombie off and obviously you can do all kinds of things <clears throat> with that conceit of uh first person zombie view but for this shot i really like this and i think the only thing i would say is potentially this is extremely picky but having a slightly different position on that hand so that this doesn't quite fall on that hairline there so you have the finger above that but leaving this empty space and I like all of this and I like the the frame you can almost bring that thumb a bit higher so it's almost a bit more in their grabby position also this seems a bit broken you might argue well it's a creature it's a zombie whatever it is you know it's okay but just a bit of a 
weird deformation there, which is you know, not your fault. That's the, the rig, but something I think I would curl this up and have a slight change in that thumb position and just bringing that out a bit more. But other than that, I mean, you can also play around potentially with, since she is closer to the arm, where you would have a, you know, kind of like a grab. And maybe you leave that hand actually a bit lower and it's this hand because there's so much room here for silhouette that it's almost like the you know hand is down and then going out for uh, for a grab during all of this. And then that hand is lower here and then this hand extends to try to grab this. Just maybe pushing that a bit more in terms of what the arms are doing. So as of now, it's the kind of somewhat stiff and it's the camera, the head that does most of the work. So maybe pushing that a bit more. And camera wise, I would probably put in a set of pieces of something, stone, cobble, something, or if you're inside a house, just because we that way we can see a bit more what the camera is doing. If there's like how much forward translation is there and what is going on there, you know. Now, that being said, this is also a very, very fast move. So if you're saying that the creature is jumping suddenly or whatever is happening there, that will facilitate that you know there could be something maybe an anticipation in this maybe arms go up a bit and then tightening of the fingers because of all the, the tightening of the muscles to go forward into that maybe that as a critique i would probably, probably push that a bit more to tie into that some lunge there and that's kind of it it's very, very cool this one has a very clever change with that and seeing what's going on i love this idea too battery down and looking at that definitely a very very pushed focal you know field of view there i think but looking at this what and this is not a critique of the shot because i like what's going on it's potentially not super clear even though it's clear in terms of color that there are two creatures there's something where i see all that stuff happening with the shooting and then there's that it's like oh wait okay that's a, it's a creature on there because it gets a bit bit dark and then as we're just about to understand this this happens and then this goes off frame and i know this is the focus at this point but i think there's anything you can do to kind of push the separation between this creature this creature and the background in terms of color maybe you need to have some elements in between some hazing or smoke elements to separate those layers that's probably what i would do here but i also love this idea of switching the view where it's it could also be something where you have you know other readouts whatever and then as this happens it could be a visor that's being flipped up from a helmet or the helmet is being taken off i know this has nothing to do with this shot but I, I just like the idea a lot of seeing this and then changing into that now you're also arguing okay we're very close to this camera here is the face so close to this but it could also potentially be more readouts or something to kind of push the idea even further it's not just that to really really understand this is totally different but um, i know you know cameras phone cameras especially don't have all that stuff in there it's kind of that's the idea but you know i might also say well maybe it's a tablet something that's part of the suit so these are the kind of the things that i that I'm, I'm seeing here i like the idea a lot and i think it's a cool springboard for other things you can do with a switch between a readout a display are we looking through uh, you know, it could be a helmet that has just one section. It's almost like it's a display on a swivel thing here where you have that looking somewhat differently with readouts and that's the rest of the real world. And as this happens, only this section swivels up versus a whole screen or a helmet being taken off. Anyway, again, I like this idea a lot and it's a cool springboard for kind of pushing the idea further, doing something somewhat inspired by that. Cool action pseudo of the creatures definitely complex with the interactions of the big creatures and the little one coming in but again i feel like we could push the clarity of that just a bit more and that's about that this one was really clever for this i really like this idea where even if this was a gameplay thing where you know it's not shooting or action stuff where it's you you know kind of walking simulator type of thing where you have props like this and as you do that, it gives you a readout like this of your lungs. I think that's, I don't, I thought that was really clever. 
I also like that there's an interaction between the arm and, and the head. So as you shake this, that it would impact your view. It's a small thing, but I like that. That'd be super picky. Mm, not that you have to squeeze it too much more. Because I like that you have a change in the fingers. Could also be a potentially a bit of bigger change in those fingers there. It's extremely picky because you do have changes in all the other ones. I also like that it's offset where with the thumb and all that. It's a lot of you know nice little details in in technically a, a simple con, uh, concept there, but this is really neat. I just love that idea of that prop, that prop interaction, and that as a UI element in a, in a potential game for something like that. It's very neat. This one sound. <laughs> That's very good. Ah, and it's still not working. It's still glitching. I'm gonna take that sound off here, but it's a if you know this, if you grew up with this, you know what's going on here. Now, if you don't know what's going on, oh, if you don't have that experience, without the sound, this might be tricky. And I think the only thing I would do here. expanding on that where there might be you know I'm, you can see a repeat it's definitely not working maybe just pushing that imagery of some some slight movement i know if that's not completely accurate but just kind of you know take some liberties with that but as you go down a couple of things that i would do i'd be careful with the fingers i, I don't know if you're saying that the fingers are now touching this and that's why they're compressing against that it's almost like what are we looking at we're looking at the thumb pushing this but then is it also supposed to do something with that and i think this could be just a bit clear with potentially just bringing in those fingers and as having fingers not out but it's more of a fist with the thumb out and maybe changing even the rotation a bit more so that when you do this is that thumb is here but it's the rotation out this way so the thumb is here uh hand is here so it's all about the thumb push of that not implying some connection there not that it's super wrong but i think this could, could be pushed that way i like that we'll stretch in that the only thing i would say here is that when you go into grabbing this to be less this is to me too vertical with that frame i would have a slight diagonal in there and then grab this and i'd be careful it seems like you're grabbing this and there's a slight move up and down where it's it's almost like you're you're grabbing this you know like the nes cartridge and you just blow into it and i wonder if this is just too much that gives us a weird add a thing so it's we're blowing onto this but then there's also a move down does it have to move down is it something where it's are we doing something with it that needs that move down that's the only thing I would say that might, just to make it clear, come up here into more diagonal. It doesn't have to be that crazy, just, you know, a slight offset there. And then just that, and then going back into this. But it's a tough sale, the blowing on this without the sound. And that's probably what I'm thinking, why this is added with that move down. So, well, if you don't have sound, it might just be boring to just have that cartridge there. Um, I think what you could do, you might be just running out of time, where you grab this, and then when you're done, maybe like a slight shaking of it or something. I know you're running out of time there. But I love this here that it's almost back and then <laughs> turns into this. Also loops nicely. Play this again. Which, you know uh anybody has done that you would try this over and over and over and over but that's kind of that yeah it's a tough sell when you do something that really requires sound to make it super clear but that's it cool action moment there i kind of grabbed this one just because of the interactions a couple of things i would probably do to make it a bit clearer i like that you have a difference there in the set but i would probably add some other lines there so that once we're down here Especially on something like this where it just turns into all gray here to have a better understanding of what the head is doing is that i mean i see there's no shadow change but just for extra clarity 
you know, is this the character being dragged or is that the head? And I know it's the head, but it could just be something where anything where you have a set piece that is a solid color, just adding lines or anything there will give us a better idea of what is really going on. Once you lose that, that gives us, you know, a context of, oh, okay, up and down and all that stuff there. What I like about this here too is that, I mean, I would probably push these effects a bit more. They're there, somewhat subtle, even on something like this. So if you ever have that, if you already have that in there, I would kind of push that a bit more. Just why not go bigger, go home. But as a shot piece, I like this. I like that there's interaction, especially in something like a graph that's potentially a bit more complex. Especially this. Pa -pa! The thing about this one is that it's a bummer that the knee is covering that leg. The only thing I would say here is if anything, changing the potential position so we can really see that leg, but also the clear bend and breaking of the knee section there. So looking at that. By some good hold. I like the rhythm of it into this. Could almost be something where as you go back with a slight maybe a drop and then a widening of this so it's not so overlapping through here also so that the character doesn't stay put this for so long so it's kind of i'm punching oh i've been blocked oh what's next and then just implying a new a little bit of a move and a bit of a change maybe with a slight head rotation and the beginning of a body rotation and then this happens to break up that movement and i wonder since that is kind of a, not a knockout, but ba -boom. instead of going back into a straight head where this feels normal and balanced and the character is okay, could almost be pushing this idea of boom, hit this. And then as you go forward, that head is slumped over. And on that pull, it can then drag a bit more and then overlap and slump a bit more. So at this point, it's almost like, well, this character is almost, it's almost a knockout already. And that's the, the final thing of bam, and we break that leg on top of that. So that's my only thing here. I would probably just push that moment a bit more. Again, not that this is wrong at all. It totally works. Just little elements here and there that might benefit from some pushing and just kind of going a bit further than what's there. Ah, uh, yes, the old laser pointer <laughs> with the cat. I love the idea. And I like to the, the contrast in all the moves where you have that pose of the arms. You go way, way, you know, slap, slap. And then into a closer and then the slight movement. So in terms of contrast and just variety, I think it's really cute. Also, what the laser pointer is doing, staying there and kind of teasing around. And then disappearing, coming back with a little bit of a wiggle there, and then some bigger moves. Even though this looks simple, there's really good variety, good contrast in all those moves. Now looking at this, I know this is, you know, there's a contest limit in terms of how many seconds you can do this, but I would love to push this where imagine you would have, as you see this here, you have the character doing that. It almost gets a bit lost. It's almost part of the furniture. So you don't have a super clean silhouette of shoes. So as it goes over there, we're almost like here. I guess this is part of something. Oh, wait, this is the character actually doing this. We have a slight foot movement. So I was thinking, to be honest, at first I missed this. My thought was, what if we had feet and legs and it's almost, I wouldn't say a party, but you know, more stuff so that when the cat goes through, a foot has to get up to make room. Maybe a little smaller kid has to run off. Maybe maybe there's a little kid and has toy blocks and the cat goes through and then there's more mayhem. Kind of pushing that further into cat is peace, it'll at peace or it's all peaceful. And then this escalates the shot into more chaos as the cat goes through people, through objects or whatever it is. That's the only thing I would say here. Now I might also argue that's just a cute little side thing that does need further you know, clarity of visibility, but you could kind of potentially just prove, uh, prove the, prove is not a word, move the shoe around for silhouette or maybe change the colors or maybe even bring it closer. So that's really clear. Oh, that person is doing that at this point here. I love this. Just love the idea. I love the animation. 
again, contrast and everything is really great. It's really nice shot.